psalmist in today's responsorial psalm says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears, Psalm 34, verse 5. And there's other mentions of fear and distress in the psalm as well. So for today's refre- reflection, we just like to take a look at the problem of fear and suggest some ways on how to deal with it and how to overcome it as well. Most of this reflection will come from a little booklet on fear written by a, a Christian counselor named June Hunt. Aside from a couple of theological problems, which are tied to the gospel that we commented on on Monday. Aside from those, the booklet is actually very good. Firstly, how do we define fear? Well, fear is a strong emotional reaction to a perceived imminent danger, and it's characterized by one of three responses, by either fight, by flight, or by freeze. Uh, Fear can be real or imagined. It can be rational or irrational. It can be normal. It can also be abnormal as well. Fear in and of itself actually isn't a bad thing. It's an emotion given to us by God. It's actually meant as a protective reaction. It's meant to activate our physical defense systems when we face a real danger. What does fear do? It it triggers the release of adrenaline in the body, and adrenaline is what prepares and propels us to action. It's that flight or fight response. So the emotion of fear is actually God-given. What doesn't come from God is living in a state of fear, living constantly in fearfulness or embracing irrational or abnormal fears. Things like anxieties, panic attacks, phobias, distress, they're all types of fear or they're all tied to fear in one form or another. And we've probably noticed in certain situations, uh, some situations evoke no fear in some people, while in the exact same situation will invoke a great fear in different people and someone else. What's the difference? The difference is in the perception, perception of the person feeling the fear. The situations can be the same, but the perceptions can be very different. For those who live in a state of fear or whose fears are abnormal or irrational, What they should do is they should try to understand why they are that way, why they embrace those fears, because those types of fears don't come from God and they don't appear in a in a vacuum. They don't come from a vacuum either. Uh, I like to say that in the old detective movies, they used to say, if you can find the motive, you can solve the crime. Uh, It's similar with fear. If we can understand why we're fearful, that's a big step in the right direction as far as being able to overcome it. Typically, it's something from the past that set us up to be controlled by fear, and then it's something in the present that's basically triggering the fear. What are some contributors to embracing irrational fears or being fear-based? Well, there are a number of them. It could be linked, one, to traumatic past experiences, which can include threats of violence from others, being having an undeveloped sense of self-worth, having parents or family members who displayed excessive fear when we were growing up. Fearfulness can also be caused, too, by emotional overload, which can include, you know, denying or suppressing our feelings. It can include feeling an excessive need to please others, or it can also come from internalized stress. It can even come from having perfectionistic parents or authority figures. Living in a state of fear can also come, three, from refusal simply to face our fears, not seeking out the help and how to deal with them, uh, continuing to reinforce our fears, like those who accommodate their fears rather than challenging them, or those whose actions and activities are all contingent on their fearfulness, can also come from reinforcing negative thought patterns that we've acquired over the years. Negative thought patterns, what is that? It means basically evaluating everything through a black filter, evaluating everything through the filter of fear, and having fear dominate our thoughts and decisions. Also, and lastly, living in a state of fear can be caused for by having a a bit of a runaway imagination, as they say, and uh, or horribleizing everything, always thinking and assuming that the worst will happen and and that you don't have control over anything. Those are the main reasons why some people live in almost uh, a constant state of fearfulness. So how can we overcome living in a state of fear? 
We mentioned before, it's helpful to evaluate why am I afraid? Because examining our fears, examining their origin, their legitimacy, and the pattern also that they have, that can help us to understand it and develop a strategy to resolve it. The Lord, as we know, wants us to live in faith, not in fear. We do that, first of all, by having a healthy fear of God, which was mentioned in the psalm. What does that mean practically speaking? It means avoiding sin and doing good, practicing virtue, living how the Lord wants us to live. We also need to be aware that living in a state of fear isn't God's will for us because fear-based thinking means at least in part that I'm not trusting in the Lord, that I'm not relying on his grace. We need to be willing again to analyze our fears honestly and discover their real sources. Could be, for example, fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of financial loss. And what's very helpful is to work on changing our focus. Our focus needs to be on the Lord, needs to be on trusting him and his grace and his mercy. Changing our focus is a big step to overcoming irrational fear and fearfulness. We also have to be willing to face the situations that we fear, again, with a spirit of faith and relying on God's grace, not relying on ourselves. The Lord is always with us, and so we need to be able to really embrace that truth. At the same time, we need to learn to release our fears to him. Also, some other practical things that can be helpful in overcoming unwanted fear and anxiety. Some of them are these, getting a, a thorough medical checkup, asking uh, the doctor if we have any condition that could be causing anxiety, asking also a doctor to evaluate the medications that we might be taking. Also praying the rosary, very simply, praying the rosary, doing Christian meditation, doing Lectio Divina is helpful. Getting adequate sleep, adequate re uh, regular exercise as well, engaging in healthy recreational activities. Actually, being around encouraging people is helpful too. Subtracting ourselves, if we can, from the company of negative people, if they're family members, of course, that's not so easy. Eating a healthy diet is, help is helpful as well. Also, avoiding alcohol and drugs and listening to inspirational music, Christian music, classical music. And also just seeking help from a counselor or from trusted friends as well. These are all ways, practical ways that we can do to help overcome unwanted fear and anxiety. So moving from fear to faith is what is essential in all of this. And a lot of times it does mean, as we mentioned, changing, learning to change our focus in life. Learning new and better ways to deal with what distresses us. Learning to focus on the Lord, not on fear. And may Our Lady, the comforter of the afflicted, help us to gain victory in this area of our lives so that we too can one day sing with King David, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears.